welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a full face of Glossier. I haven't done one of these in a while, but they have released so much stuff recently that I wanted to do an updated full face of Glossier. I am a Glossier rep, so I can get you guys 20% off. That link is always down below for uh, new customers to Glossier, so 20% off of free shipping. But um, about a year ago, they asked me to be a rep for them, and so now I've been using their brand for that long, and I've pretty much used everything that they make. And I'm kind of going to go through and show you guys what I use and then what I don't use. So I want to let you know kind of like what works for me and what doesn't and why so that you guys can be informed consumers. This isn't just like a Glossier channel, you know what I mean? So Glossier is a fantastic brand. I love their whole philosophy. I love their aesthetic, but it's cool to be able to tweak their products for each individual person's needs. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel while you are here. Hit the little bell so that you know when I post new videos and let's go ahead and jump in. So I already have my skincare on and I don't use their priming moisturizer anymore. I think it is a beautiful product. It does a really great job of being a moisturizer and a primer, but it stings my eyes a little bit. And I just don't know what ingredient it is in their priming moisturizer, but it's also in their rose water face spray. And I can't use either one of those because they sting my eyes and I don't know why. So I have my regular Sunday Riley skincare on right now. And I'm going to start by going in with the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint and I have it today in medium. So this is actually, I think, best applied with your fingers. That's kind of the whole thing with Glossier. And I think that one of the other things with Glossier and any kind of no makeup makeup look is that sometimes you think that the assumption is that it's gonna take you less time because it's less makeup. It's actually a lot more time consuming to put on a like low key face of makeup because you're concentrating more on the details. It does kind of take a little bit more time and effort to put on this kind of makeup. I'm going in for another chemical peel on Monday and this time I really feel like they did a really good job last time of getting my acne to like really calm down, chill out. But this time I'm really hoping that we can get rid of some of the like melasma and discoloration, just like hormonal stuff. So I'm really, really excited about that. I'm so pleased with the results that we got from the last one. So you can see that is like, I don't know, I feel like this particular foundation skin tint gets the worst wrap out of everything on Glossier because it really has so little coverage. It is very much just kind of a dewy situation and so you can see that it does really blend easily but it's not very high coverage i wouldn't even call it like a foundation so now i'm going to go in with the stretch concealer and i wear this in light and you will see that this kind of has a lot more coverage for one thing and it does a really really good job of being like the perfect skin texture and just camouflaging everything blending out with kind of the warmth of your finger and you can see it's like kind of imperceptible in terms of it being makeup but it's a really fantastic formula for just literally i mean as worn out as the phrase is on youtube it really does just look like your skin but better you know so the biggest complaint that i think that i see about Glossier products is that like it's hard to get this kind of makeup to last all day I think that that's also the advantage of using full coverage with a lot of powder and like setting sprays and things like that is because of course it lasts longer a lot of times Glossier gets kind of written off as being kind of a teenager or like you know perfect skin kind of brand but I've done tutorials on my channel where I showed you guys how you can use Glossier to like camouflage even like really acne prone skin. So um, I don't necessarily think that that's always the case. So actually what I'm going to do is just go in with the powder like right where I need the setting. And so this is just a little kind of more precision powder brush from Real Techniques. And I'm just going to tap into the powder here. Sorry, I didn't show you guys that. This is the powder, and I love the packaging. And it has this really great little trampoline in here and that's how you dispense the product and this is such a beautiful powder it's really not like any powder i've ever used before because i don't know it's like a heavier texture like almost like it's got something moisturizing in it which is really nice and then also once you put it on it doesn't go totally matte which is really nice so i'm just doing this kind of in my t-zone in kind of the greasier areas we are going to a party later on today, and I think a lot of it's going to be outdoors. I'm going to do a little under my eyes here, just in the middle. And 
And even if this looks a little bit powdery at first, if you, when you get all done, you hit it with a finishing spray, this stuff goes straight to skin texture, which is so nice. Okay, I'm going to pull out a sponge here from Flower Beauty, and we are going to use it to apply the cloud paint to my cheeks. I'm going to use today the shade Beam. You can apply this with your fingers if you are just going on to like fair skin or just a dewy, dewy kind of skin texture, but since I I'm going a little bit more like powdery in some places. I like to just be able to blot this on. And I like to go ahead and bounce this on my hand like this so that I kind of diffuse the product out. And then I can kind of build this up as I see fit. You know what I mean? Because the worst thing you could do is put on too much at first and then not be able to kind of like back your way out of it. I would much rather kind of like, you know, do a little bit at a time. But how beautiful is that? I think that this is like one of their best products. They just aren't like anything else on the market. And it's so funny because like there are a lot of brands trying to impersonate these kinds of products. Like I've gotten so many kind of like phony baloney cloud paints. And <laughs> if you guys are new here, I'm a big blush person. So I do like to kind of go a little overboard on the blush. That's just me. I think that it kind of like makes me look a little more youthful and makes my skin look a little bit more natural. So if that's not for you, then you know, you don't have to put on as much as I did, but a little goes a long way with this stuff. I really, really like it. And then we can kind of blend a little bit with the end of the sponge that doesn't have anything on it in case we need to take a little bit off. All right, next I wanna go in with the Haloscope. And I actually have this in two shades. The original one that I had is called Quartz and it is this shade right here. It's kind of like a more silvery champagne color. But I recently bought the shade Topaz and it looks like this, it's a little bit bronzier. And if you are new to Glossier or new to the Haloscope, this has kind of like a, like a highlight on the outside and then sort of like a balm on the inside. And so you end up with like a really pretty kind of both a pigment and also sort of a dewy texture that it builds on the skin. So I'm actually not going to put this directly on my face. I'm just going to kind of take my pinky like this and we're going to kind of tap this on my high points here and get just a little glow going. And in the like winter time or something when my skin just gets a lot paler, I wouldn't necessarily go for something this warm but I think that it kind of brings out my freckles and it just sort of accentuates like, I don't know, a little bit more of a tan. And I do recommend putting it on this way. When you try and kind of drag this onto your skin, I feel like you don't, like you can drag your makeup around. If it's like the only thing you're putting on, then that's totally fine. But I also find that this is a really beautiful highlight for like right here, you know, I can, you can't see that, but like you can put this like on your shoulders and stuff and it's so pretty. This is really good for just kind of like, you know, a little body highlight, a little je ne sais quoi, <laughs> you know what I mean? And actually I am going to use a little bit of the quartz just on my cupid's bow and kind of on my nose area. And then you can kind of see the difference. So do a little on the cupid's bow. And then we're gonna put a little bit of like gloss on later a little on the nose and it is super subtle. It's really, really nice. So that's just kind of the face. And now we're going to move into eyes because this is kind of the area that Glossier has been releasing in more recently. And so these are some of the newer products that I haven't had the chance to include in previous videos. So I'm really excited. I did actually do, you know, obviously release videos of these things, but I haven't gotten to do a full face of Glossier with them. So the next thing we're going to go in with are the Lid Stars. And if you guys haven't seen these before, they're really interesting. So like this one goes a little bit purple when you spread it out. And then this green, sorry, the shade on that is Fawn. And it actually is like much purpler than I expected it to be. So it didn't end up really being my favorite. This one actually, I love. This is the, I think it's called Herb. And it's this really pretty green color. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. And then there's also one called Slip that I really, really like. But today we are going to be going in with this shade Lily. This wasn't my favorite in the beginning because it is kind of lavender and it goes a little bit blue, but I think it's really pretty when you just sort of do a wash of it, like all over the lid. 
it's just this kind of like barely there, like very pretty kind of glistening thing. Yes. And it just kind of brightens the eye up. Like again, I was not, when I first kind of swatched this, I was not a big fan of it because I felt like the shade was just too cool. And I think that a lot of stuff kind of has like a lot of blue glitter in it these days. And I don't really, that's not for me, but there is one that's even more so like that in this range. And that's not, I don't own that one. I think it's called Moon. But once I got this one on, I just think, look at that. That's just so pretty. It's like kind of silvery, you know? And then I am going to go in with the herb color just kind of in the crease. And I think that these are really for people who don't want to have to touch their makeup up over the course of the day. You know what I mean? Like it's very much just kind of like a put it on and forget it kind of like eyeshadow cream powder situation because once this is like down y'all she doesn't move at all and it just adds this like very slight kind of contour it's very pretty i feel like the colors that they chose are really interesting you know it just wasn't like a full like range of copper or something it just gives you a lot of like fun options that are easier to work with than you would think I'm going to grab a little bit more of the kind of topaz haloscope, and I'm gonna do that kind of right in the middle of my lids here. Really pretty kind of gold color, and it leaves a little bit of like a dewy thing on my eyelids, and a little bit of the quartz just in the inner corner. And maybe the brow bone. Okay, now I'm going to go in with the Boy Brow from Glossier. I use it in brown. And this is, to date, my favorite brow product that I've ever used. It is this great kind of like fibery mousse kind of consistency. Like if I am doing a full full face, I will draw my eyebrows in with a pencil and then go over it with this. But so much of the time, especially as it's gotten warmer outside and I haven't wanted to wear as much makeup, I just use this by itself. And I just love the look of a groomed brow, a little power brow action, you know? So because things have kind of layered on top, I'm going to go back in with a little bit of the stretch concealer and just sort of like re-camouflage my situation here. This is a, I don't know, this kind of like popped up recently and I'm actually on antibiotics for it. It is not your average bear of a zit, y'all. It is like, fighting for its life all the time. And because I don't want the mascara to just go every everywhere, I am going to repowder underneath my eyes just a little bit because the sort of oily consistency, I don't think this is oily, but like it feels dewy, you know what I mean? The balmy consistency of this concealer will kind of reconstitute any mascara that's on top of it. And so I do recommend kind of powdering just around your eyes. And we only really have to do the underneath because that lid star dries down to a really beautiful powder texture. And as for the products that I don't use from them, there are a handful. I don't really like their lipsticks. The whole like blotted thing is not really for me, especially because they don't really have any nude shades that I feel like are very flattering on me, so I just don't really do those. So it's the moisturizer that I don't really love because it stings my eyes. Same thing goes for the rose water spray. And then there are two lip products other than the regular just balm.com. Just don't really rate for me. I think that they're fine, but like there are just other things that I'd rather reach for. So we are going to finish this off with some of the brand new Lash Slick from Glossier. And this is their newest edition and it is a mascara and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I did a video not that long ago where I compared this to my other favorite, which is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions. And it really is a toss up because like one, they just kind of give different results. You know what I mean? It's sort of what you're going for. I'm kind of spoiling the outcome of that one. But this gives you these really long, thin defined lashes, whereas the Thrive really builds so much volume kind of at the roots that it does look like you are actually wearing lash extensions. You know what I mean? It bulks up your lash line. You guys, if you're still here, I want to 
to talk to you about something, and that is that the like overwhelming majority of reactions that I'm seeing right now in terms of like all the changes on YouTube, like from the bigger YouTubers even, but also just from the general community, the biggest like sentiment that I feel like everyone shares is just kind of missing when things were a lot simpler. <laughs> I totally agree and I, I'm not the kind of person who like looks to the past and like reminisces about that kind of stuff and says like oh if only or you know oh I wish I could go back because I, I think that progress is healthy and I think that we all kind of are supposed to adapt that's sort of the point of life but I do also feel like YouTube has gone from being you too which is you know like broadcast yourself to being this like kind of money machine. It's always been a money machine. I mean, anything on the internet is a money machine, but it's become this like very high production value. It's like, there's just a lot of pressure to make everything very like TV-ish, you know? And I think that the clickbait got to everybody and everybody just got really burnt out on, you know, like just really lowest common denominator kind of marketing of just, you know, all the tea videos and stuff like that. Like people just get really frustrated with that stuff. And as someone who's been on YouTube since 2014, I know, it's crazy. I just kind of want my channel to be a sanctuary for simplicity. I want to kind of bring that back without it being this kind of insulting, annoying, you know, I don't know. I want people to be here for the long term because we're friends and because we have built a cool community here where we want to come and hang out and just sort of like, you know, do life together. Not because I have found, you know, the next big, I don't know, controversial topic or something like that or the next wave. I mean, I'm honestly thinking about going and doing like a what's in my bag video or like a travel essentials video or a, you know, get to know me tag or st something like that just because it's been so long since I've made anything like that on my channel and I really do, I feel a lot of the same things that a lot of the kind of like bigger YouTubers are expressing on like Twitter and stuff. Um, that YouTube has just gotten really overcomplicated. And if you notice, like I know that this is really subtle, but if you notice, like people are doing lower and lower key thumbnails and they're actually starting to put what the video is actually about in the title instead of being like, you'll never guess what happens next, you know, which we're all guilty of because it really was the only way to get people's attention for the longest time. But I feel kind of optimistic because I think that we're moving back from that. I feel like the general audience is just getting a little bit sick of it. And at least I hope so because I'm sick of it. And I just don't like kind of insulting viewers that way. But to some degree, that was like the only way to get, like to break through the noise was to just be part of the noise. So I don't know. I want to continue just like making really sincere videos that are just like fun for me and feel like we're hanging out together. That was kind of everybody's favorite time on YouTube <laughs> was when we just kind of did simple stuff. And I want to go back to doing simple stuff, you know? So let me know, what would you guys think about, I'm getting mascara off of my eyeball. What would you guys think about a like, you know, a get to know me tag for some of the new people or um, a Q&A or a what's in my bag video or something like that. I, I just really want to start like doing kind of chill stuff like that again. So, all right guys, so last and final step here, I'm actually going to use some Scandinavia makeup setting spray because I, like I said, I don't really like the glossy setting spray. Hurts my eyeballs. And this is really quick. It dries so fast. I really appreciate that. And then we're going to top it off with some of the Glossier birthdaybalm.com. I love all. Let's get some uh, not crazy flashback on that. Awesome. I love all the balm.coms. I will say that I don't really like the cherry. I have the cherry and red doesn't really look good on me. Just straight up red, especially kind of a pinkier red like that. It just doesn't really flatter me. And so it just kind of takes over my face. So I like the more like clear colored ones. And this is just so actually effective at making your lips healthy. It does such a good job and it doesn't go everywhere and it doesn't break my mouth out or anything. Trying to put it on left handed is interesting. I like just not having color on my lips, especially when it comes to kind of a no makeup makeup look. But guys, this is the final look with a full face of Glossier with their current range. I'm excited to now have, you know, eyeshadow options and mascara options so you really can just do a whole fresh beautiful face of Glossier makeup 
And even though I have, you know, obviously this giant thing that's like healing on my face, I still feel like it's just kind of camouflaged. Glossy is not really about, you know, making you look not like yourself. It's just about kind of enhancing what you already have. And I think that that works at any age. I think that especially the stretch concealer is just so good for every skin type. I just think that it does such a good job of kind of camouflaging whatever you think that needs to be camouflaged without kind of like hiding your skin underneath. So guys, if you enjoyed this full face of Glossier tutorial, then go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Hit the little bell so that you know when I post new videos. I have some really fun stuff planned and I would also like to know what you guys would like to see from me kind of in the vein of why you come to my channel. Like why do you come to my channel? Is it to just kind of hang out with me and you just kind of like don't really care what the content actually is? Or is it more for the kind of natural makeup looks or anything like that? Thank you guys so much for watching today and hanging out with me. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!